snow that I see, but still pretty close to uh, awesome when you can go Helm of Obedience in combination with Rest in Peace just to go for the kill. And that's exactly what he did, and I'll tell an anecdote about that in just a second. But before we do that, we have Todd Anderson on the left, most recent Invitational Champion. You guys know him from Star City Games, his premium work, his select side work, his videos. The ultimate grinder Todd is. He is playing Bug Control. He is playing Jerry Thompson's take on this deck. You're going to see some innovative cards here. I don't want to spoil the fun, so when it does happen, we'll definitely talk about it. But there's a little bit of cascading going on here. As we see, both players look to have kept their opening hands, and we're going to see an Ancestral Vision, and what could he be cascading into? Uh, I, guess the, I guess the jig may be up. We'll have to find out. Stay tuned at home for this exciting, exciting information. Jonathan Job, Island, the vision ticks down. Now, something interesting that happened in Jonathan Job's match earlier, um, his opponent played a show-and-tell, and John put into play Helm of Obedience, and his <laughs> opponent put into play an Emrakul, and he's just like, so you're dead, right? And he's like, no. <laughs> and then the next turn, John played a Rest in Peace, activated the Helm, and killed him. So, Good it's, times. Yeah, it's definitely something interesting, a cool angle of attack that, uh, that John's deck has. That combo has been picking up a little bit in Legacy recently. Uh, Todd Anderson ponders into that Delta that you see in play and leaves the other two on top. I'm curious if he'll shuffle them away or keep them there. We'll find out shortly. End of the turn, brainstorm for uh, Jonathan. This is actually a surprising um, play by Jonathan. It's not like he's under um, any apparent pressure from Todd. It looks like he's in a matchup where there's time. And so doing the brainstorm like this, which is to say maximizing mana, but not maximizing the return from the brainstorm, is a little surprising. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And if you've ever read the article by AJ Soccer on just how to brainstorm properly and when to do it and when not to, it's all it's very interesting as we see John play a non-fetch line there, so he's gonna draw the other card from the brainstorm as well. Yep. I mean what he basically did here is whisper with whisper with no buyback. Yeah. And so we saw Todd draw for the turn, and that is that cascade card that I was trying to make a secret, but I the jig is just up now. It is a shardless agent. And it seems like Jerry just always finds his way back to that card, Jerry and Todd do. And we'll have that on the screen for you guys in just a little bit. For those of you who don't know, it's like a commander card, and it has Cascade on it, and it's blue, and it's an artifact, and there's nothing it can't do. And it's there it so is for crazy. you guys. You, know, you look at that, and you might not think, um, yeah, from playing Chase, you might not think that that would be such a huge deal, but what is it capable of? Well, it's capable of being Force of Will food, right? Yeah. Um, it is capable of creating card advantage, perhaps of like an incredibly powerful variety. It's capable of, as an artifact, being immune to certain kinds of removal. Huh? Go for the throat, for example. Just there's, it's a surprising card, and to see four of them says a lot. Four of them in this version of this deck. Him to Turok, blast from the past. And, and the things that the Charles Agent can do is we're going to see a counter spell here from John. Todd doesn't mind. Uh, I mean, it can cascade into Tarmogoyf, it can cascade into Deathrite Shaman, they have four Brainstorms, one Ponder, four Ancestral Visions, mm. three Thoughtseize, four Abrupt Decays. So there are a lot of cards here that that, uh, that Todd can cascade into, but John. we, we oh. see John missing a land Oh, draw. how sad for him. Fourth mana here from Todd Anderson, Shardless Agent. Cascade, remember, uh, that triggers on being cast, so... Oh, that's sad. Abrupt, Abrupt Decay, decay. The, old, the old whammy. Abrupt Decay is uh, the only actual potential whiff that exists in Todd's deck at this moment in the game. Found one, unfortunately. Well, I guess you got a good two to at least. Yeah. I mean, you can give the beat down since John doesn't have any lands right now, but he did draw an Arid Mesa, so he can get back into things here. For those of you who are just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan here in the booth with Cedric Phillips. It is the seventh round of today's event. That means after this match, or after this round, there's one more round of Legacy, and then it'll be tomorrow with day two, and we'll start it all over again with both Legacy and Standard. But also, going on in the background, we're gonna have the Standard Open that happens basically at the exact same time as this event. Yeah. We're gonna have a lot of magic geared up for you guys tomorrow. But right now, John is looking to get his footing reestablished here. We are going to see a rest in peace here. He's gonna to try to establish part of his combo of rest in peace and helm of obedience. The rest in peace have gonna take care of both graveyards. Todd doesn't seem to mind too much. And I think, Adrian, we're gonna have a fight over this ancestral vision now. No, we won't fight over it. Oh, wait, here we go. 
and Todd is going to brainstorm in response to the force of will being put on the stack. Looking for a force of will on his own, and it looks like he found one. The problem is we do not have a blue card. What will happen with this stack fight? Brainstorm? And Todd's going to have to resolve putting some back. He also does have the fetch line there, so he can... They are fighting in Todd's upkeep right now, so Todd can actually sack his fetch line as well to clear the top of his cards so that he doesn't have to draw one of those cards. But Force of Will does resolve for John. Ooh, that was good news for John. Yeah. Even at the cost of that card, letting that Visions hit would have been pretty devastating. Yeah. And Todd does shuffle away the top of his library, getting a Brain Cestral Recall off of his Brainstorm. It's not actual card advantage, but it's virtually card advantage. Shuffling away garbage feels pretty good. And Todd draws up a pretty nice one in Jace the Mind Sculptor. Unfortunately for him, it's just a card he can't cast this turn. Oh, boy. But Tarmogoyf can come into play. Zero, one, Goyfy Goyf. Woo! That is a big one. Rest in peace. A card that we've seen a healthy amount of this weekend as John does just pass back. We saw it earlier... Uh, when Patrick and I were covering Reduke versus Orin Beasley in Standard, just how devastating it was shutting off Rune Chanter Spike, shutting off Snapcaster Mage, and right now shutting off Tarmogoyf and Legacy. It is a well-versed card, a very good card, and it's been devastating so far this weekend. As we see a Jace the Mind Sculptor, Todd fights back with a Force of Will on the counterspell that John's trying to use. We do see in John's hand a Force and a Jace, and I think it's worth fighting for, and so does John. So Todd's going to lose that, and here comes Shardless Agent. Again, because that Tarmogoyf is an 0-1 because of Rest in Peace. I'm actually kind of surprised that it was dropped into play in some ways, because it, I mean, it is a card that can be used to feed a Jace or a Brainstorm. Yeah, I am a little bit surprised by that as well. Now, we do know that Todd's last card in his hand is Abrupt Decay, so he could, you know, conceivably Abrupt Decay that Rest in Peace and oh, try to get go. damage there in that go. way. 2-3. Straight up 2 3. Yeah. And it can become a 3 4 right after that. Yeah, better than nothing, I Boom. guess. Boom. And it happens. You can't counter this. Uh, the question that's being asked right now is uh, Jonathan is wondering where the rest in peace goes and where the decay goes. Yeah. The rest in peace, I believe, is going to be removed from the game, and the abrupt decay is going to be the beginning of a new graveyard. Okay. As I believe how that's going to work out. And we will get confirmation from our show director exactly where these are going to go. As you see, the spotter there taking a look at the card, figuring out, just want to get the game state 100% correct for you guys at home. Figure out just how big this Tarmogoyf is going to be whacking him for. So, uh, we wait. We wait to find out what the uh, eventual resolution of it is. And I'm pretty sure that I've got the rules on that correct. And now we've got some reading. we got a reader. Yeah. It's all good. It's hey, got to make sure. Now, we do see in John's hand, and John does have a Caracas hiding in his hand along with the Terminus, not playing the Caracas because of Todd's Wasteland being in play. So that line of play does make sense. And now it's just really, Todd is empty-handed. Uh, Jonathan, I mean, he has cards, but we could say that he's kind of empty-handed. Right, right. And now we're going to be playing off the top of our deck, but Todd does have a Tarmogoyf where John does not. Okay. Where, for those of you who are just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan here with Cedric Phillips. You can have all kinds of awesome fun on the internet besides watching us. Get involved in the conversation online. At SCG Live is uh, what you would do to reach every single one of us. The hashtag SCG Envy. That's to get involved in the conversation that's happening online. If you were reading on that, you would have heard from uh, Pat Cox how he's doing in the event right now. He was four and two not so long ago. But... That requires you to be following that uh, hashtag SCG Envy. And you can reach both Cedric and I directly if you'd like. SCG Live is the best way to get everybody. But Cedric A. Phillips is the at you want to go to for Cedric and Adrian L. Sullivan for me. So do join the, join the conversation. Interact with us at home as we are waiting for an appeal here. One of the players is appealing to the head judge. They just want to make, you know, they want to make sure they get everything correct here with the ruling, you know, obviously perfectly within the rules, and typically a good idea to do so if you're unsure. Yeah. I mean, one of the best things you can do if you get a ruling that you don't like is ask for an appeal. I cannot tell you how many times I have heard somebody happen, you know, usually at a lower level event where something has happened, they get a ruling that's slightly off, and they're like, okay. Well, if you think that it's not quite right, 
ask for the head judge. That doesn't mean you ask for a head judge every time, but if you've got a question or if you've got a sneaking suspicion something's a little bit different, get the head judge over. And you can see Toby Elliott right there on screen, our head judge for this event. And uh, he's making a ruling that I will we'll see. It looks like Rest in Peace is in the graveyard. With the fetch land, that means their time is going to be 3-4. So uh, as you saw, if I had been the table judge, I would have gotten that wrong, and you'd oh. have been right to call for a head judge to make the correct ruling. Oh. I mean, it's been about probably five or six years since I've been a, a judge, so some of my uh, corner case rules knowledge is not totally sharp. Well, some things may have changed, and they always do. Now, if you look at that tropical island in play, if you were Patrick Sullivan, you would be scowling right now because that is <laughs> a, a not pretty uh, I dual love hand. I love it, personally. <laughs> that looks like it came out of a five-color deck. And forget what Patrick thinks. All he knows is red cards anyway. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Patrick has used some gorgeous dual lands um, when I've seen him with them. There, it's rare. Okay, so, uh, so it is it is removed. I guess I did have so the ruling. So you were right. right. Look at you. Look at you. Two three. Let's see what John draws this turn. John Ooh. draws an island, so he says go. Now something interesting. John should be a little bit more careful with how he draws his cards for the turn, just because he does have terminus in his deck. As so we see, thought sees oh, off the top here ouch. for Todd. Taking care of the terminus, growing the Tarmogoyf one more. Happy to pay two life to get that out of here. Yeah, no kidding. So just a Caracas in the face of Wasteland, so he can't really play that one. Ooh, but Jason oh, Mind Sculptor says, hello! Wow, no fear of a daze, just drops nope. it. No, I mean, Todd, Todd is cardless. Okay, yeah, I, didn't, so I, nothing, I didn't realize he had no yeah, cards. Nothing there to be go. scared of right now. But Wow, I don't mind bouncing right now. Yeah, I mean, Jonathan's making the decision of, okay, do I want to brainstorm? Do I want to bounce? Brainstorming will let me see three new cards, put this Caracas back, which is pretty useless. Maybe I find a fetch land. But then Tarmogoyf can eat it alive, so it's, 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 a, tough, it's a tough decision right now. Bounce. Right. Bounce it is. Let's see what Todd can muster. Oh, oh, boy. And this is kind of what Jonathan... Uh, didn't want to see happen was the loss of his own Jace. He was killing or bouncing that Tarmogoyf just to be able to, on this subsequent turn, follow up. And is that an entreat? Yeah, that was an entreat, the Angels, oh, but not double white boy. to be able to uh, to miracle it there. Tarmogoyf back on the table. Source of Plowshares, good draw. These guys are just going to go back Boom. and forth. Take back that. and forth. And I like main facing that right away. Just so if, if Todd's draw is forcible that turn, if he untaps, he can actually hard cast it. Yep, just exactly. get it off the board right now. Todd draws a polluted Delta, go along with an abrupt decay. John draws, it looks to be a counterbalance. So now we're really going to be having some fun. Boom. Naked flips of uh, the top of the library. Abrupt decay. All right, <laughs> let's take care of that. Never mind. And I believe that Todd has a brainstorm in his hand yep. uh, hanging out. And a fetch land in his hand. But nothing nothing to toss away with that fetch land. That's garbage yet. He goes for it. Main phase brainstorm. Maybe he'll find some garbage. What is that? Death Rite Shaman brainstorm and... Dismember. Dismember seems less than exciting right now. It's going to go back. And he casts the Death Rite Shaman, puts a Brainstorm in his hand, and has a uh, Fetch Land on top. I can't remember which kind, but it's right on top of his library right now. All right, so there is a Scalding Tarn. Todd, doing a pretty nice job of coming back here. Brainstorm a timely draw. Polluted Delta drawn for him to go along with another Brainstorm, and we're going to see that Brainstorm Main again. Phase brainstorm. Dismember, Tarmogoyf, and Thoughtseize. Goodbye, Dismember. Fetch Land back on top again. It likes to hang out on top. See his thoughts. He's what you got over there. He's got a good one. Entreat the Goodbye, angels. Goodbye, entreat. I'll pay two left to get rid of that. Yeah, no kidding. And then we're gonna see uh, that death right shaman just hanging out with his friend Tarmogoyf. They actually aren't friends. They're more like frenemies. <laughs> yeah. As we're gonna see Jonathan go down to nine life with this fetch land. Now, depending on the size of that Tarmogoyf, and I don't know if we're going to have the Tarmogoyf die out there or not to get the power and toughness there for you guys, depending on you know him, him moving himself down to 9 and end of turn death, right? Shaman activation puts John down to 7, and main phase activation puts him down to 5, and I don't know if that Tarmogoyf is a 5 power or not, but because of the rest in peace in the graveyards, but I know that there's a Jace in the graveyard. There's also an enchantment. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if this was a 5 power Tarmogoyf. So basically bringing himself down from 10 to 9 may have been detrimental. And right now, Jonathan's trying to find something. Remember, this is just game one right now. He's like, what's the counter? Well, let's find out. Yeah. He's like, that's it. You got me. Two, two, five, dead. And uh, if it's a six, seven, of course, it doesn't really matter. But I think that the Tarmogoyf was going to be a five, six. So sacking the fetch line there actually just shaved a full turn of himself. 
we're going to go to our sideboards now. Jonathan Job, um, what he might bring in, amongst other things, Supreme Verdict is not a terrible card against a deck that might cast a counter spell on your removal sp spell. Supreme Verdict makes sense. Path to Exile, you're facing an opponent who does not have very much in the way of a creature count. So just having more swords to plowshares, even bad swords to plowshares, is going to be something that's going to be useful. And other than that, I think you're going into the question of decisions, um, much more what kind of call do you want to make. Do you see anything else here that you like? Do you like Vendillion Click in this matchup? Um, maybe I could see that, but I'm not sure of that one. Yeah, I mean, there are three copies in the side, but I'm not in love with it just because of Rep Decay again. It just kind of trades with that card. It's nothing spectacular, and you know Todd's going to leave them in because he just did see Counterbalance game one. So I would be surprised to see even Dillion Click come in. There is a counter yeah. spell on his sideboard, which I actually liked during those games. Um, it actually felt like a pretty good card. Um, That's I mean, acceptable. Other than that, nothing, nothing too great. I mean, I could imagine actually, since we're in a Jace fight, bringing in Jace Bellerins to just be uh, Jace killers on, you know, in this fight here. So that's a possibility too. But again, with these clicks, with these Jaces that are Jace Bellerins that are in the sideboard for Jonathan, I think that that you're you're talking about not an easy call. Like I think Supreme Verdict is fairly easy as a call. Yeah, I think um, that, that should be joining us. These these are much more. Um, you know, how well do you know the matchup? How does Todd play? How do you play? How, what's your judgment on, on these things? And I, I could see going either way with that. Uh, as far as Todd is concerned, as he is up a game right now against Jonathan Jove and his Blue White Miracles deck, uh, things that he can bring in include an Inquisition of Kozilek. Uh, you're also going to find a Crozen Grip here to kind of break through Rest in Peace or Counterbalance or Sensei's Divine Top. So there's a lot of use here, but he only has one. Uh, him to Torak, which is completely reasonable. Want to get that early game interaction. And then other than that, I mean, he does have a Force of Will, but I don't, I'm not in love with Force of Will in this matchup just because the two-for-one, you know, it's not really great. And other than that, I mean, I don't think there's... There's not a ton coming in here. You know, this is the kind of deck that it seems like Bug... I, I think Bug is... And the reason it's so popular is because it kind of preys on this kind of deck. Um, and, I mean, we saw in the mid-game there when both players were just playing off the top of their deck, Todd drew a little bit better than, than John. But I think one of the things that really does lead things in his favor is the, is the access to Ancestral Vision. One of the things that makes a card like Force of Will much less uh, important... Now, normally, in these grindy things, losing that card, totally a huge deal. But Jonathan, having shown the um, Rest in Peace is indicating that there's probably going to be a card like Helm of Obedience. And, you know, you might think, oh, well, Force of Will, I need to make sure the combo doesn't happen. Well, Todd already has uncounterable things that can help stop that. Yeah. He has Abrupt Decay to get rid of the Rest in Peace, and he's got Cross and Grip in the board if he wants to continue down that path. So where your instincts might say, hey, Force of Will, you want to keep it in here, I, I think it's really a, a much harder question, and, and tossing it out to stop the loss of that card advantage is a very reasonable choice. So as we see both players shuffling here, Jonathan is going to be on the play. So we will find out exactly uh, if he's able to keep his seven cards fair a little bit better this game with his mana issues and just his card issues that he had that game. So. For those of you who are just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan here in the booth with Cedric Phillips. This is the Star City Games Open Series featuring the Invitational. We are in sunny Los Angeles. Well, this time of night, not so sunny anymore. And this is the seventh round of the uh, event right now. On the left, Todd Anderson, he is, you know, on a tear of this event. And one of the things Todd wants to do, he wants to defend that crown. He was our champion in Atlanta a short three months ago. Jonathan, though, is having none of it. He wants to try to make sure that he's the one that'll be making that top eight. And every single loss is just one way slipping from that happening. So you can expect him to put up a fight. Jonathan opens up with the planes. Todd Anderson does a uh, fetch here looking for... Um, I'm gonna guess, well, there, I don't have to guess. He puts down the Underground Sea, and we might be seeing a turn one Deathrite Shaman or a Ponder. We're Ancestral Visions, I forgot about the most important card, I yeah. think, in this fight. Vision is so, so powerful and dangerous. And we are going to see a Mystic Gate here from Jonathan, followed up by a Counterbalance. Ooh, wow. I mean, if we look back at our last game, I think that that Ancestral Vision fight that Jonathan jo um, Job fought over, he had to fight there, but the cost of the extra card might have cost him the game anyway. 
It may have, but what's not going to cost in the game here is Counterbalance Blind reveals a Sensei's Divining Top to counter Todd's Brainstorm. You don't see a second land from Todd, and what you see is Jonathan trying to put him in the hard lock almost immediately. Mm. I mean, it's sort of like watching an awesome bit of like a reversal in a wrestling match. Yeah. You ever watch, you're like, well, I'll do this. Well, you're on the ground now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, Todd no. fortunate enough to draw a second land, which is a polluted delta, searching out a bayou. And Are we going to see a decay? We're either going to see a decay. I mean, he, he actually doesn't have a decay oh, in his hand, but we gonna, see... Oh, uh, him to Turak. Hope it works. Yeah, we see a him here. And Jonathan's going to tap that Mystic Gate. Go top a lopin. Three, zero, four? Three, zero, three. He did bring in the Jace Bellerins. So he has a Tundra, he has a Force of Will, and he has a Jace Bellerin on top. So it looks like he is going to be hit with this him to Torak. He's like, well, I'm going to lose some cards. What are they yeah. going to be? Decision making time. And the thing about this is, uh, it's not that big of a deal. It's not great for him, but he's still got counterbalance top in play, and he's going to be able to put a Jace Bellerin down. So that one goes bye bye. Uh, it looks like a path to exile. And this one goes bye bye. Source, Source to Plushers. That was actually a very potent hit by Todd Anderson. Now, looking at Jonathan's hands, he has a Terminus and a Mystery card. Draw Jace Bellerin for the turn. And uh, no fear of days. Yep. Just lays the Jace. Ticks it down, draw card. Is that what we're going to see? There it is. Ticks down, draw. He knows that land is there. And now he is two cards deeper in, so the Sensei's Divining Top is going to be able to reveal two fresh new cards for him. Two more chances out of two. We see Force of Will. We see land. Is that rest in peace? It is rest in peace. And we're going to counter that, I believe. Bing. Boing! Now, the important thing for Jonathan right now, Adrian, is that he does find a land for the top of his deck for that Ancestral Vision. Yep. It's super important that doesn't resolve, because as long as that doesn't resolve, he's probably going to be sitting relatively pretty this game. We do know that he has a Force of Will in his hand as well, so, I mean, there uh, he has a Force of Will on top of his deck, excuse me, so he could, you know, conceivably draw that, reveal a blue card to counter it that way, but, of course, he'd much rather go about doing things the easy way All with right, top right. plus balance. Zero, and we're going to do the top in response. Force of Will... Wow. Now here's the funny thing is that he drew with the Jace Bellerin, putting a land on top of his library into his hand. Yeah. He could have had that be the Force of Will instead, but he chose the order. Yeah. So now that Ancestral Vision, look at that expression. He's yep. like, oh, I didn't think this was going to happen. And so that Ancestral Vision does end up resolving. Todd ends up drawing four cards for his turn, three from the Vision plus one for the draw step. It might well not be enough, though. He's still yeah. facing a, four, uh, a table that looks daunting. And there is a rest in peace in play for John, and the other card in his hand is a Helm of Obedience to go along with that Terminus. So if he's able to untap here, he can go for the win. Yep. Depends now, on really what Todd leads with. Did Todd draw any abrupt decays? Anything like that at all? Or is, it, uh, or is he knocking on the end of death here? It's pretty close. The one card that Todd did draw, Adrian, is Charlotte's Agent. So if he's going to try to find Abrupt Decay, he could Cascade into it. But we're going to see him cast mm. Tarmogoyf. Jonathan turns over Counterbalance to counter it. And Todd just plays a Creeping Tarpet and says go. If Jonathan goes for it, he will win. If he... <laughs> okay. Plays around with the top of his library. Jonathan, taking a look at his hand. There's a Forcible Supreme Verdict and a Counterbalance there. So Jonathan's going to draw the Supreme Verdict. We're going to see him cast. Does it work? A Helm of Obedience. This Alliance's card wraps and the game on I up. I am out of here. Boom. For those of you guys wondering at home exactly how the combo works between Helm of Obedience and Rest in Peace, Adrian. No problem. So if you are old enough to remember when Helm of Obedience was printed, which was in the mid-90s, you'll know that what it does is for X mana, it costs four mana to cast, for X and tap, you will reveal the top of the library until of your opponent until you find a creature, in which case you'll put it into play under your control. Okay. Well, here's the thing, is that it cares about cards going to the graveyard. That's how it keeps track. You keep on putting a card in the graveyard until you hit that X or you find a creature. With rest and peace in play, the go to the graveyard is replaced and instead you remove these things from the game, which means that since no cards go to the graveyard, Helm of Obedience never finds the amount that it needs, whether it's one or whatever, remove or in the graveyard. So you basically get the entire library removed from the game immediately. 
then the next person takes their turn and they die from decking. Yep. So to put that one more time more clearly, rest in peace makes it so that cards don't go to graveyards. Helm of Obedience means you mill somebody till you find that creature and you stop when you get a number of cards in a graveyard. That never happens, so you mill their whole deck out of the game. It is a unique combo, one that we don't see a ton of in Legacy. It's one that Caleb Durward has had a lot of success with, and it is one that so far Jonathan Job has had quite a bit of success with, as he is 6-0 and today, yep. and he is going to Game 3 against Todd Anderson with that combo in his deck. Yeah, I mean, in essence, it's very similar to Painter Stone. So yep. just another two-card version of the Painter Stone combo. And one thing you're going to find in John's deck is he does have that one Helm of Obedience in his main deck. He also has three copies of Rest in Peace main deck because that card does have more applications across the format. Of course, shutting down Tarmogoyce and Snapcaster Mages, and God forbid he plays against a Dredge opponent. Yeah, you know, Dredge, but, Reanimator. Yep. I mean, I don't know if Eli Cassis is here or not, but uh, if, if he was, he'd be, be pre-boarded against him. Yeah. But he also has the one Enlightened Tutor main deck to be able to search for some of those pieces. And then, you know, if he, he has another Helm of Obedience in his sideboard as well. So he can find the combo to win the games with. For uh, all of you Reanimator fans, uh, our, our friend Glenn Jones says, no, Ely Cassis is not here. Frown Town. Sensei's Divining Top faces off against perhaps a Him to Turok, perhaps a Tarmogoyf. Tarmogoy. Apparently, these are the only undefeated players left in the event. Really? One of the pairs. One of the pairs of players. Oh, oh pardon me. Yeah. So there's two other, pardon me, two other undefeated players. At the end of this round, there will be only two. Yep. And then finally, at the end of the day, there will be only one. Indeed. So we turn, see... Go ahead. Turn two fetch. And it looks like he's going to try to assemble the combo. Counterbalance Sensei's Divining Top. What do you say, Todd Anderson? I think he says Cross and Grip's in my hand. He does have Cross and Grip. However, it's going to be important, you know, Chris and Grip does break up this combo relatively well, but if Jonathan does just have a three accidentally looming on top of his deck, it will counter that as we're going to see a Hematorak here from John. Reveal a one. Sensei's right. to <laughs> Todd pumps the fist. All right, no blind reveal this time. Two wastelands in Todd's hand. Whoa. That was an exciting roll, all the way off to the edge. You leave, and you leave. Swords, Swords and Caracas. Caracas. Are we going to see a wasteland here to knock down a land? Choke the mana out? There is a lot that I feel like many legacy decks really do feel like some sort of grappling match. Yeah. Things get back and forth. Yeah. As we see that wasteland take care of one of John's Tundras, and Tarmogoyf coming across for a significant amount of damage. Looks to be a 3-4 right now. Upkeep, we see the activation of the Sensei's Divining Top. Jonathan trying to ensure the draw of a mana. And that is very bad for him. Another Wasteland from Todd Anderson. Yep. Take that. And he knows that the next two cards are not land. And Todd Anderson sitting what we could call pretty. This is game three of this match. And uh, this Tarmogoyf is just marching in unimpeded. Todd fetches, gets a second underground C. It looks like we're going to likely see a Crows and Grip here from Todd to take care of one of these permanents to make his Tarmogoyf one point bigger as it's going to try to take care of this Crows and Grip. Plus Jonathan has a blind three and he knows what's on top of his deck. So we'll see if he even tries to reveal. Okay, and he does. Boing. Take that counterbalance. And now we've got a enchantment in the yard. The Tarmogoyf gets bigger. An instant, I believe that might be the second instant, so that didn't get anything bigger. 4-5. Fetch. Oh, are we going to see a Jace as well? Even if Jonathan um, Job were to cast Force of Will to stop it, it's yet another creature or card type in the graveyard, so Todd wisely does this before attacking. I can't discount the fact that the Force of Will does also count those also cost, excuse me, Jonathan, a life point. So even a Force of Will would take care of the Jace. As you said, it would give Tarmogoyf one point bigger, and oh. it would deal Jonathan a point of damage. But none of that is going to happen because we have Jade Fate sealing. Oh, boy. We have Tarmogoyf attacking. And what we have is likely Todd Anderson moving to 7-0. and o. Yeah, I mean, he he even let Jonathan have the land. He's like, that's fine. It's a Mystic Gate. Or is that a Mystic Yeah, it's a Mystic Gate. Good job with the colorless. Todd draws his card for the turn. He's considering what he wants to do, and we're going to see a brainstorm here, revealing two abrupt decays and a death right shaman to go along with another Jace the Mind Sculptor, a forcible and a polluted delta. 
I mean, I think that the only way that Todd Anderson can win here is if he loses control of himself and attacks the spotter at the table. <laughs> yeah, that's the only way I think Todd will lose this game. <laughs> and Jonathan uh, looks at the top of the library, looks at his hand. I think he's going to extend the hand in just a moment. Yeah, just a, a, a tough situation as he's considering some things here. There's an island on top of there, so he does get to hit another land drop. But again, Tarmogoyf causing a huge problem. Jace causing another huge problem as well. He will go through the iterations here and the permutations of what he can do to get out of the situation as he is looking at his sideboard as well. And likely come to the conclusion that I think Adrian and I have come to, which is just, it's... Na, 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 na. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Now, the thing is, is he, what he's probably thinking about is what if Todd does not have, um, you know, a force of will, what can I do? Oh. But we know that Todd does, and that's why we're thinking it's wrapped. And, that's and it's it. done. Boom. Todd Anderson, current reigning and defending Invitational Champion, moves on to 7-0. and Back-to-back -back fantastic tournaments for Todd so far, defeating Jonathan Job 2-1 to one with his Bug Charles Agent deck designed by Jerry Thompson. John just had some mana issues in both the games he's lost. Both those wastelands backbreaking, of course. Yeah. But, I mean, that's, that's, that's legacy in a nutshell, honestly. Now, watching uh, the deck play out, it looked really smooth to me. I liked the look of that deck. Todd Anderson, um, you, you said this is a Jerry Thompson brew. I, I really like how it looked like it played out. Um, so kudos to Jerry for creating what looks to be a really potent deck. I, I know that one of the things about Legacy, Legacy is always changing, and uh, Shardless Agent, if you don't have some, I mean, you've got to chase them down. Yeah, I mean, it's not, an easy, it's not a very 